So this chi-square test of association, in this case, again, the flow will be the same. We will learn first the basic concepts. Then we will see the research questions. What are the assumptions and hypothesis? See, is my speed is okay because I'm going a little fast because I think we have to cover a lot. Maybe if, if you are thinking that I'm fast, then I may slow down. Uh, because I don't know, there are people who are joining it. Uh, they, they said that they are coming in the today's session for the first time. So just those of you who are uh, joining today's session for the first time, is the speed okay to you? Although I can see less number of people, but still. Can anyone say about the speed? Is it okay or should yes, I? Yes, ma'am, ma'am. That's good. Okay, thank you. So the research question, uh, it is the uh, underlying research question. Then what are the assumptions and hypothesis? What are the commands and interpretation? And then at last I'll again summarize the commands. So the research question, which is important in this case is like, we want to test the association. So we have got two variables. We may have two categories of those variables or more than two categories. Depending on that, we make maybe two by two table, two by three table or n by c table. So like in this case, if I want to test the association between gender and diabetes, so gender has got two categories and diabetes also has two categories like present or absent. So in this case, I'm emphasizing on the study design because there is a only import, there is only a very important difference difference between the chi-square test of two proportion and chi-square test of association, that is the study design. In case of a chi-square test of two proportion, you take a sample, like in this case, you can take, there are many individual, a study was conducted and you have selected each individual and you have asked only two questions, like what is your gender? Then you have got a male and female and are you a diabetic or not? Like yes and no. And then the data was collected and you made a two by two contingency table. Tab, we also call it as a cross tab or we call it as a two uh, way table. So it's an arrangement where you classify your two variables. So the categories of your two variables. In this case, like if you define it by male and female and presence and absence of diabetes, it is a two by two contingency table. Similarly, you can have a BMI category so it is a three by two table where you classify the BMI as normal, overweight, and obese. And similarly, diabetes, absence of diabetes or the presence of diabetes. So you may have a result like this. So just look into these three tables, table number one, two, and three. And can you have some guess, like in which case there will be association and there is no possibility of any association. Think for a while and then answer. In which case you think that there will be definitely association? Third one. Third one, ma'am. Yes, you are right. Third one is sure shot. And first is also sure shot that there won't be any association. Right. Only the middle one is a little ambiguity. So you can write that in first case, there is no association. In second case, there can be some association. And in the third case, there is a strong association. So what are the research questions of the research question, which generally we frame if we have to test or use this chi-square test of association is that you want to test with whether the relationship between the BMI categories and the history of cardiovascular disease or not. You can also test the association between a surgical technique X and a surgical technique Y, and the occurrence of surgical site infection, whether it is surgical site infection is present or absent with a particular technique, whether that technique can be X or technique can be Y. So here also you will see that there, there are two variables. In this case, you will see there is a one categorical variable BMI, which has got three categories, normal, overweight, and obese. And there's another variable, which is a categorical in nature, which has got two categories. So it will be a three by two contingency table. Similarly, if you see this uh, research question, there's a surgical technique X and surgical technique Y. So it has got two category and the present uh, and absent of surgical site infection. It has also got two categories. So it will be a two by two contingency table. If you see the third research question, it is the quality of sleep, which has been categorized as good versus bad, poor. And the academic performance again categorizes good versus poor. So it has got 
two levels of each category. So again, two by two contingency table. So now in all these cases, what have you observed? That there is a categorical. There are two categorical variables, maybe a binomial or a polytomous, and then we are trying to look for any association between them. So we call it as a chi-square test of association, or it is also known as the chi-square test of independence. Means if there is a no association, then that means these variables are independent. So this is opposite to each other. If you say there is association, that means there is no independence. If you say there is no independence, that means there is a association. But again, like correlation, there we learned that a positive correlation coefficient doesn't tell about the causality. The similar concept is true here also that a good value of chi square and a significant level does not tell you that these are causal in nature. So now let's understand the underlying assumptions before we can apply this chi square test. So there should be two categorical variables. And these two categorical variable can have two or more categories that we saw. So it can be a two by two table, it can be a three by two table, etc., or four by two table. So the second assumption is like there should be independence of observation. And the fourth independence of observation we have learned in the previous session that that means that the two groups which you are taking. If you have counted in one individual in one group, like maybe as male or maybe as present or absent of diabetes, if you have counted one individual in present, then you will not count that as in uh, present. You will count that is, uh, as absent. So it should be not be uh, related. And if you are like having a gender, this thing, then you cannot take husband and wife and keep them in the different column. So they should not be related to each other. And the fourth assumption is that relatively large sample size should be there. This is to avoid the hypo, this uh, expected frequency because we say that the expected count in this uh, case also, the minimum expected count should be more than five. So independence of observation, we learned that there should not be relationship between the subject in each group and the categorical variables are not paired in any ways. And relatively large sample size, we say that because we uh, we at, at least expected cell frequency should be one and it should not be less than five in majority 80% of the cells. So the null hypothesis for this chi-square test of association is that there is no relationship between the variables. Whereas the alternate hypothesis says that there is a relationship between the variables so now the, what is the concept of this expected frequency in the cell? So when you think, when you assume that the null hypothesis is true and then you count it as a expected count, then that is known as the expected count. So this is defined as a count in each cell if the null hypothesis is true. That means there is no association. And in this, in this case, like you assume that the two variables are independent of each other. Now we calculate the effect size also in case of a chi-square test of association. Now what is the measure of effect size? So measure of effect size we call it by the value of Kramer v or phi. So Kramer v is there in two by two table and phi is there in if the contingency table is more than two by two. So we define this as if it is up till 0.1, we call it as a small effect size. If it is up till 0.3, we call it as a medium effect size. And if it is up till 0.5, we call it as a large effect size. So that's the overall uh, theoretical concept behind the chi-square test of association. Now let's see the questions which I have to demonstrate. So for chi-square test of association, I have got four or five questions. So you can see, maybe I, I like I have told you regarding the data. This was a retrospective study because we collected the data. It was a record-based data of 180 patients. And now I want to know whether the association between this oxygen requirement, because there is a requirement of oxygen present and no requirement of oxygen. And I want to test this 
with these variable like with the gender of the patient with the smoking status age group oxygen requirement with disease severity and with the total number of comorbidities so depending on the levels it will be either 2 by 2 table or it will be a 3 by 2 table so let's go to the data set so the concept of residual which we learnt in the chi square in the spss that is that you don't get in jmov you only get the effect size that is the kramer v and phi and the value of chi square so this is the data set again you go to this frequencies and there is you can see here there is a option of independent sample chi square test of association this is the you can see here it is for the contingency table so i have clicked this now for this you can have first was the oxygen requirement so i'll move this oxygen requirement variable so let's say say where these variables are so this is i think oxygen 1 maybe at the time of admission this one is for so i have moved because this oxygen requirement is a independent variable and now i have to see it, this requirement across various so i'll move this to rows because we remember that we move the dependent variable to the column so remember it by dc so dependent variable to the column so this oxygen requirement is a independent variable and i want to see uh, it across various uh, levels maybe or you can do, you can make it in independent also it is up to you in this case i am making it independent and i will see whether this requirement is more in gender no in this case then i should make it dependent because i am checking oxygen requirement so i'll make it in column and then first i have to test it across gender so gender you move this gender here in the rows and with this diagram you can see you can only move the nominal or ordinal variable here and then you can go down and see so here you can see the various options so like in this case you can see the chi square there is a chi square continuity correction there is a fisher exact test so remember uh, right now you were asking regarding this fisher exact so this option is here so you can click this also but if the expected count in this case it is a fairly large sample size 180 so the expected cell count will be more than 5 and then you can come down and see the other options so in this case you can see there is a phi and kramer v value which you can click and then this is the observed count if you want to see the expected count you can click this and then you can have this row wise percentages plot i am not showing but if you want to have a side by side plot also you can do that so if you want to see uh, this table so this is the outcome output table you can see that the oxygen requirement no and yes and the value of chi square if you see the value of chi square it is significant because the p value is significant with 1 degree of freedom and the value of chi square is 4.03 and if you see this so how to calculate this expected count so expected count will be based on this the 73 and 26% so if you apply the same percentage here in like uh, 50 and then it, if you can count based on that so this number 36.7 and 13.3 these are the expected count by taking this proportion 73.3 and 26.7 so you can see that there is a difference between the observed and expected here and none of the expected count is less than 5 so you can again hide it because you don't want to report this expected count in the table so this is the 2 by 2 table you can see here and you can write the description here that you know the oxygen requirement it is 16% in case of a female whereas it is 30.8% more 30.8% that means 14% more in case of a male so oxygen requirement was more in case of a male similarly you can uh, focus on this but we will focus on this oxygen requirement yes so it is more in case of a male as compared to female and this was significant and if the if you see the effect size this value of this phi 
and Kramer v. Uh, this is 0.15 for two by two table value will be the same because you can report both. Generally, we report the Kramer v if it is a two by two table, so it is a, uh, a small effect size. Sorry, up till 0.1 we used to call it small, and up till 0.3, so it is a medium effect size. So you can say that. So this was regarding the first uh, question. Then the second, uh, again, I have to check it with the smoking status. So I will keep this oxygen requirement as such. And in row, I'll put the smoking status. So this smoker, I want to see whether it is more in smoker or not. So again, I have shifted this to here. You can see the populated one. And you can see here that this is, uh, again, this is significant. So in this case, it was less in smoker. Oxygen requirement was only 17.2% in smoker, whereas in case of a non-smoker, it was more. Okay. And again, you can see the value of this phi in Kramer V. This is again a medium effect size and the value of chi square. Nearly it is a borderline significance because it is, it is 0 0.04, but it is significant. Again, now coming to three categories. So if I see it with the age group of patient, so this is the age group maybe. So I'll move this smoker status to here and this age group to this value. So now you can see here that this is again significant and you can see that we have defined it maybe uh, categories, various categories. So in the third, in the older age group, the requirement is more. And in this also it is more as compared to the younger age group. Here the requirement is only uh, seven, but this is a very small number three. So in this case, I would like to see the expected cell count also. So you can go and you can click on this expected count. So I'm going here. Maybe you can click the statistics. You can go to the cells. And you can click on the expected count. So you can see here that the expected count, none of the expected count is less than five. Here it is 21, 7, 79, 28, 11, and 31. So then you don't need to take the value of Fisher exact because the each cell have an expected cell count more than five. And the value of this, now you can see the phi. This is non not applicable here. Because for uh, more than 2 by 2, it is a 3 by 2 table. So we take the value of Kramer V, not phi. And this Kramer V is again the medium effect size. Because up till 0.3, we take it as a medium effect size. This was for, again, if you have one more category like maybe disease severity. So if I move this age group here, and maybe the disease severity. So disease severity is like this one, where I have coded as the asymptomatic and mild into one and then moderate and then severe. So you can again see in this case, it is not significant. And this also it is, uh, if it is not significant, then you are not going to comment on the effect size. And you can see the various proportion. You can see here that asymptomatic and mild 21.8% uh, they were requiring, whereas the moderate and severe, the requirement is 37 and 38%. So this was there. So this was uh, regarding the chi-square test of association. So any, any difficulty in uh, this uh, up till this point? Do you want anything to be repeated? I'll once again repeat the command for the chi-square test of association. So for that, you need to go to the frequency. Here you can see this first one is for the one sample proportion test. And for one sample, we have learned this chi-square goodness of it. You can have two proportion or you can have more than two proportion. Then this is the contingency table where you want to test about this chi-square test of association. And then we learn about this McNemer also. So right now we have learned this chi-square test of association. When you click this, you have a window, something like this, where you have a statistics and you have a hypothesis and nominal also in, in statistics, you click this chi-square because uh, you know when you click this Fisher exact, when the expected cell count is less than five. 
बस दिस फिशर एग्जैक्ट टेस्ट इज एप्लीकेबल ओनली फॉर टू बाई टू टेबल If the table is more than two by two, then this chi-square continuity correction is applied, and this is also uh, when your sample size is less, then you apply this chi-square continuity correction, which is also known as the Yates correction, and that correction is done to uh, make it, uh, for, uh, I mean, just to compensate it for the less sample size. So this option, if you have an adequate number of sample, you don't need to tick these chi-square continuity correction or Fisher exact test. Only the chi-square test is sufficient. So is it okay with all of you? Up till this point? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the expected value uh, of uh, if it's less than five, it is it is not the normal observed value, right? If if the expected value is less than five, then only we need to uh, put the fishes yes, yes. or the uh, yards corrections. Yes. So if the so observed if they, value is less than five, then it doesn't matter anything. No, no. Then you don't need to. That's why you just check with the expected count. You can click the expected count here from that counts cells. If you click these cells, you can see here that there are observed and expected count. So you can click this and you can see if the count expected count are uh, more than five. Then you don't need to. If there are less than five, then you see whether it is a two by two table or two by three table. If it is a two by two table, you apply Fisher exact. If it is a two by three table or more than two by two, you apply continuity correction. Okay. Is it is it okay to all of you? Can we go to session three, which is the chi square z test of two proportion? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Thank you.